Hello there, this is C-A-N-W-A-N Kenan from Kenan Plays and today we're going to play part 4 of Baruku Girls. Alright, let's just continue and click on this and find out what they will do to the village chief. Bring us the head of this pitiful village. Alright, even they think this village is pitiful, eh? Hmm. Oh, all the zombies lining up behind them, looking all so cool. I could hear multiple cries from pleas of protest issued in voices as broken as the people who gave them. But I could ultimately do nothing under other than watch from this relatively safe distance as a pack of ducklings dragged one of the village, a woman who cried and pleaded and struggled desperately to escape whatever cruelty intended for her. What are they going to do to her? Hmm, I wonder. Asahi di didn't reply immediately while smiling. Hmm, I think she's one of the evils too. And as I once again looked at her beauteous face, I saw tears rolling down her features. Tears of despair and mourning. And as I looked at her, I saw most of the things I felt at being powerless to help those in need. All the anger and frustration and sorrow and despair, all of it magnified many times over. Watching as the woman jumped in front of the underworlders, Asahi choked down a lump of bow that had formed in her throat before speaking. The head of each village has a special ability that allows him or her to coordinate the skills and abilities of others under their care. Oh, so the heads of the village has a has some special skills to it. They can communicate with others under their care at great distances, organize and coordinate the efforts of many with ease and are essential to the ability of the village to function cohesively. Alright. So a the village chief is has a cell phone that only everyone can call her but sh and she can call everyone everyone else, but everyone else can't call each other. Unfortunately, the Underworlders have found a way to turn the gift into a weapon they can use against us. I wasn't certain I understood what Asahi meant, but I had no doubt that it wouldn't it would not like I wouldn't like what was going to happen. Alright, so what's gonna happen? A certainly re and I a certainly reinforced by the sight of the village head dragging herself up to her knees and looking at the underworlders in tearful despair. No 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 stop 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 please 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 don't do whatever you are gonna do to me. Whoa 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 did she just breathe in? She just breathed in, right? Oh my gosh, look look at her tie is like it's like the, the tie is like oh my gosh I'm stuck. Please please free me. Nevia smiled deeply at this, heaving a deep breath that pushed her breast upwards and outwards, straining her outfit, even as she looked into the looked up in the sky. Oh, no matter how many times I hear you overworlders back, that was as good for you as it was for me. Was was that as good for you too as it was for me? Gwen Nor smiled wonderly, tears rolling down her face, while Andriana green, green, grinned a grin that did a crocodile proud. That would do the crocodile proud. What? A crocodile would be proud of this? Hmm, okay. Watching and waiting as the duckling took up station around the underworlders and the village head, and as Navia walked. To take up position behind their prisoner. All right, from now onwards, her name will be Neff. All right, Neff. So I, cause I think she's she's gonna appear very often. Then she bent over just enough to speak in the ear of the terrified, sobbing woman. Your days in the light are over, and soon you will thank us for that. Boom! Whoa, this woman is. Well, I don't think she's as big as the rest. Mm. Alright, and she used her ass whipping mm, thing to whip her and tie her around. Oh, what's with her butt, man? Mm. Seem awfully disproportionate. With that, Neff stood upright once more, 
and before her eyes unleashed her braided hair in serpent tendrils that lashed out and snaring the head women serpentine right serpentine as she cried out in fearful despair the underworlder's hair bound about her thighs calf and arm then whipped out her breast and hips okay as Neff chuckled crudely, flames surged down her hair, instantly incinerating large portion of the head woman's clothing. Vroom! Alright, her clothing is in flame. So she's naked now again. Mm, once more, the head woman screamed, and while I couldn't tell if she had been physically harmed, her terror was all about palpable. Okay. But the underworlders green that much more with the ghostly Gwen alright now she's Gwen or Gwen no right easier Gwen heaving eagle breath at her body visibly pulsating beneath her dress she's all yours Gwen take her and free these people to the darkness with pleasure with pleasure without warning Gwen fell to her knees before the hate woman then fell upon her as well mm, alright Alright, and the head woman is like, bleh, bleh. What in the. Whoa, they are taking. They are, they are like taking her. They are chance to, you know, to do whatever thing they want to her, you know. As, and what is. Uh, and, and what is this? Some some sluggish thing, you know? Some sluggish, slimy. Alright, let's see. Before my eyes, tendrils of living slime material from the ghostly underworld body as Gwenor commanded them forth to spread over the head woman. You know what? This reminds me of an anime, Tokyo Go or something like that, if you guys watched. Whoa, can you give her a rest? Come on. What's this about? What's this about? What's this about? I have the print screen this. Alright, looks nice. Gwenor restrained her humanoid form, but her appendages enveloped the head of the woman until much of her body was sheathed by them. Hmm. As I looked on in a mix of horror, disgust, and fascination, Fas fascination, the head woman fell to her side, screaming in shock and disgust, making one last effort to, to save herself. But Nev Hair had held her thought, and Gwen would not be denied. The woman of living atoplasm fell upon the head woman's back. Her numerous tentacles spread about her body, cupping her breasts and running about her legs and her thighs and mm, what else? A situation gravitated by Neff had put at her as well, causing her to cry out in shock, manipulating her body and allowing Gwen to continue her ministration and great ease. Mm, Alright. Go on, give in. You know you want this. Again, the head woman wailed and cried in protest, crying out in protest. And if not for the great distance between us, if not for the fact I was unarmed and faced with a veritable legion of darklings, I would have flung myself at the underworlds with all the buildings furry in my heart. But at the same time, the atrocity I was witnessing was affecting me on a different level. Spoke in a language of desire and lust, I could feel my body responding to this abhorrent display in a way that made me feel sickened. Alright, looks like he's getting high over this. And there was nothing I could do to stop it. I couldn't stop it from happening, nor could I do as much as avert my eyes from it. Alright, of course, you know. You know, especially this tentacle right here, this tentacle. Mm. Hey, what is this tentacle doing? What is this tentacle doing? Hmm, is it, is it, is it, is it, is it going to, hey, hey, going to play the nose? Or something else? Hmm. All I could do was watch as Neff put at the head with her hair and Gwen continue to manipulate the overworld with a ghostly touch. All the while the village looked in, the villagers looked on in defeat and despair and the ducklings grunted and growled eagerly as Adriana took up station in front of the head woman and bent down to look her in the face, you can't fight it, you know. You can already feel it rising up in you. 
The head woman in the speak simply grims helplessly, help, helplessly her eyes screwed shut as she continued to shadow, shaking her head in desperation, something which prompted Neff to chuckle cruelly. cruelly. Oh, I love it when they say no, when they really mean yes. Alright, seems like they're still raping the head chief. The three underwater laugh in evil delight, watching as Gwenor suffused the poor woman they had captured. Okay. The living ectoplasm was spilling into her, with tentacles of her substance penetrating the overworder's mouth, even as perspiration rolled down her exposed skin in sheets. Oh, okay. Perspiration rolled down her exposed skin in sheets. Hmm, hmm. Exposed skin. The ducklings roared and howled with delight at the spectacle, while I felt like I was going to vomit. She's almost there, just a bit more. Just a bit more, says Gwen. Alright, alright, Andriana is too long a name, so from now she's gonna call, call a Andy? Andy, Andy sounds nice, right? Alright, you like it, don't you? You like the way it feels bubbling up within you? Go on, give in, give in. You want to, you know you want to. Hey, I know you want it. At an instant later, time seems to grin to a complete halt. Leaving everyone and everything frozen in place for a brief second that seemed to last an eternity. Right before the head woman opened her eyelids to reveal burning red eyes, and she greeted a grind of pure, insentinable malevolence before she cried out in sheer ecstasy. Hmm. Yes! Jumping back in shock as the head woman became as every other duckling present. I was then driven into new heights of horror as I watched her cry out in cruel triumphant triumph a cry that was transformed in grisly in a grisly of pure darkness that poured forth from the evil that had corrupted her and spilled upon the ground, rapidly spilling over everything and everyone bleh, I know. As I looked on, each and every last one of the villagers was corrupted with a span in a span of seconds. Alright, so looks like the head village, Jer, went to corrupt everyone else by spitting some gooey stuff on them. And a new kind of horror was unleashed as they gave sway to the evil that had overtaken them. Oh no, oh no, oh no, but infusing the head of the village with the essence of the underworld, the underworlders use their ability to spread forth the flow of the underworld everywhere that's within his or her range. Alright, turning light into darkness and unleashing every evil whim we force ourselves to restrain every day of our lives. I barely heard a thing, Asahi said. I was horrified by what I just seen. He was turned on too, not only horrified, but at the same time, my body was reacting to that horror in a completely different way. I felt energized, excited, with a thrill of pleasure running up and down my spine. And as I clumsily staggered my up to my feet, I was startled when the globe created by the far side crystal dissipated, leaving me to turn towards Asahi. Alright, he is high now and he turned to Asahi. We need to get going. Usually the underworlders will spend some time celebrating after their vic after a victory. They don't seem to have noticed us, so they wouldn't be in any hurry to search an area, looking for anyone who might have gotten clear. But it's only a matter of time before they begin to search an area, and we don't dare remain any longer than we, Takashi. Takashi, what is it? What's wrong with me? I still couldn't believe it. He's getting high. I really couldn't focus on anything but the lingering thrill of excitement and pleasure and atrocity below had spawned, with, spawned within me and my disgust that could react to it in such a way. And so trapped by the premium thrill my body was enjoying and the shock and the fury I felt at the actions of the underworlders, I staggered over to a nearby tree and smashed my head against it. Bam! Bam! 